after the successful Galaxy S7 Edge, Samsung is back once again with a big and curved Galaxy S flagship. This time, however, it's even bigger. This is the Galaxy S8 Plus, a massive Android smartphone with premium design and a state-of-the-art feature set. At first glance, it looks similar to the S7 Edge, but closer inspection reveals striking differences. It's once again water-resistant, but comes with a stark new bezel-less form factor. The screen is of course curved and there's a great choice of beautiful color options. The Galaxy S8 is a real eye-catcher, but equally great is the in-hand feel, which is extremely smooth and seamless. It gets fingerprints, but the grip is perfect. There is no longer a dedicated home button, it's been replaced by an on-screen one, but you can still use it to wake the phone up, thanks to the pressure-sensitive sensor in the home button area beneath the screen. Just press firmly on it and the screen will light up. Unfortunately, this pressure-sensitive pad doesn't serve any other useful purpose beyond this. The unusual new screen may seem ginormous with those 6.2 inches, but there is a catch. It has an aspect ratio of 9 to 18.5, which means it's not much wider than the current 5.5 inch screen in a standard 9 to 16 ratio, but it is considerably taller. So how does this change the user experience, you may ask? Well, it's actually a double-edged sword. This display format allows for more content to be shown on the screen, which is great. But on the other hand, if the content or the user interface aren't designed with such a screen ratio in mind, it may lead to some slight issues like having black bars around video and games, or having some UI buttons and elements positioned out of reach. And there are such instances encountered with the Galaxy S8 Plus on a fairly consistent basis. It's a Super AMOLED panel with resolution of 1440 by 2960 pixels, resulting in an astounding pixel density. Even tiny phones appear fine. This quality AMOLED display can get plenty bright when outdoors, as well as very dim when viewed in the dark, which is great, but even slight viewing angles introduce unwanted color changes. Samsung has once again reworked its take on Android. Based on Android 7, the new Samsung QI features an interesting and unique visual style. The iconography has simplistic style with clean and likable shapes and curves. The new animated wallpapers go well with that, but they seem to slow the phone down a bit, which is why it's best to replace them with a static image. Essential applications like phone messaging and calendar are all familiar and pleasant to use. There are some elements here, though, that are put towards the upper edge of the screen, making them hard to reach with such a tall aspect ratio. Along with the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus, Samsung is debuting its own virtual butler, Bixby. Its ultimate goal is to be a successful Google Assistant replacement, but at this time it's a bit half-baked. For example, Bixby doesn't support voice commands at launch. Those will temporarily be handled by Google Assistant. Bixby does have an interesting feature called Vision. It's best described as a smart camera, which can give you shopping links, read QR codes, carry out image searches, or recognize places, depending on what you put in front of the camera lens. Right now, it's a bit of a hit or miss experience. Products with labels on them, such as a branded box of chocolates, for example, work well. But more generic looking things like a black laptop or a phone, for instance, seem to be way more difficult to recognize. The leftmost home screen page on the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus is the Bixby home screen. It's something like HTC Blinkfeed slash Google Now kind of screen, which aggregates a bunch of organizational and lifestyle features, such as alarms, calendar appointments, reminders, latest news, frequently visited web pages, and more. It's a nice little feature that fits the overall concept of a virtual assistant. In the US, the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus are powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 835, while in most other markets it would be Samsung's own Exynos 8895 chipset doing the computing. Both system-on-chips are extremely powerful and built on the state-of-the-art 10 nanometer process, the main benefit of which is higher power efficiency. Performance should be almost identical between both variants. The Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus are generally very quick. No significant hiccups uh, with regards to performance are observed, only the occasional stutter. However, while 3D gaming is perfectly possible, the frames per second in some of the more intensive titles 
just don't reach the comfortable 60 FPS, which is a shame. Internal storage space is quite generous at 64GB and there is also a microSD card slot if you need even more. This year Samsung isn't increasing or decreasing the megapixels in the main camera of the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. Instead, it's worked to enhance the image processing. The single rear shooter is a 12 megapixel unit with aperture of f1.7. Pictures coming from the S8 and S8 Plus are fantastic. Detail levels are superb, dynamics are great and colors are mostly realistic. Very rarely there would be a slight white balance issue, but in more than 95% of the time colors are very pleasing. Unfortunately, there is still some over sharpening going on, uh, which may be somewhat annoying when you're photographing stuff with very fine details like trees or running water for example. Low light photography is once again at the highest level imaginable with preserved details and authentic colors. Video recording quality exhibits the same characteristics as the photos, good detail level and good colors, but there's quite a bit of over sharpening going on, which may be irritating in certain situations. The Galaxy S8 Plus comes with a massive display, however most of the video watching will be happening in the YouTube application and aside from movie trailers, most other content there is in 16 to 9 aspect ratio. This means that you either get black bars on the sides or you lose some content up and down if you use the crop to fill function. The phone also supports HDR video playback by the way for improved dynamics and more vibrant colors, but sadly at this point such content is extremely hard to come by. The loudspeaker of the new Galaxy is very powerful and quite substantial for a phone speaker. Samsung is also making a big deal out of the included AKG earphones. If you manage to push them real hard into your ears and make them stay there, which I could not, their sound is indeed pretty good. A juicy 3500 mAh battery is powering the Galaxy S8 Plus. The phone holds up quite well, although standby times don't seem to be superb, which is probably due to the always on display feature, which isn't that useful anyway, so it can simply be turned off. This way it can easily stretch to a day and a half of use. The battery life statistics read 18 hours of continuous video playback or 78 hours of music playback. Web browsing on Wi-Fi should last for up to 15 hours. These numbers are slightly better than those of the iPhone 7 Plus. Galaxy S8 Plus also did very well on our battery test lasting for exactly 8 hours surpassing strong competition like the Google Pixel XL, OnePlus 3T and LG V20, but not the iPhone 7 Plus which lasted longer. The Galaxy S8 is a big, beautiful and powerful smartphone. In fact, I would say that it's the best Android smartphone for users who need an extremely large display. The unusually thin bezels happen to be a wonderful feature here, as each and every millimeter counts with such big devices. The extra tall display, however, is a different story, as it tends to both help and hamper the experience depending on the situation. Thank you for watching this phone reader review. If you liked it and found it useful, please like and subscribe. And if you'd like to read our even more in depth Galaxy S8 Plus review, you can find the link in the description.